Welcome to worship this morning. Uh, special welcome to all those who are visiting with us. We're happy to have you here and everyone who is joining us online. Welcome. I uh, want to thank everybody who's making worship possible today, especially thank our Chime Choir and Jean. That was very lovely, so thank you. Uh, we are continuing to uh, pass our offering plate during worship. Uh, today we're celebrating Christ the King Sunday. Uh, this is the final Sunday of the Christian church year, so that's why we've got all of our different colors of the church year up here. And we'll be talking a bit about, more about that for our children's message. I also want to thank everyone who made the Holiday Bazaar possible uh, yesterday. Uh, it was a great success. If you, if you helped with that, could you please stand and we can thank you with applause. But, uh, yeah. Great, so there's still some crafts, some mincemeat pies, and some turkey pies still available if you'd like to purchase some of those. Yes. And I think that it's a good idea um, to think of your neighbor, like our shut in. Mm -hmm. They would love the turkey pots, just so you know, they can fit with the microwave and the meat pies. Yeah, thank you. Yep. Um, also want to thank everybody who uh, donated for our Harvest Home. We'll be delivering those uh, donated items to the Juniata Food Pantry um, this week. And thank you to everyone who also submitted surveys for the nine-month evaluation. Um, we're still getting some surveys in, so it was really helpful. We had a really good meeting. We started coming up with some short-term goals during council. We'll be sharing that during our congregational meeting in January. Um, there were a couple that said they would like a phone call from me, and so, uh, but they weren't signed. So if you do, just let me know, and I will be happy to call and visit with you. Uh, next week uh, is starting the season of Advent already, so that's November 27th. We'll start preparing for the birth of Jesus and lighting our Advent wreath. Uh, starting next Sunday as well, in our adult Sunday school, we're going to be doing an Advent series based off of the movie, It's a Wonderful Life. And so if you'd like to join us, we'll be talking about different themes from that movie and how they relate to the Advent and Christmas season. You'll also find more information in your bulletin about the Christmas Angel Project, which is coming up. Uh, there's lots of details in there about uh, ways you can still donate for the blessing bags, ways you can volunteer to help hand out presents. If you have any questions, just let Sonia know. Are there any other announcements? All right. If not, please rise as you're able. Oh, one thing I did forget was to mention that you might notice on the front of your bulletins uh, this is designed by one of our members, Mar Mara Erickson, so it's very pretty, so I hope you take some time. You can take it with you at the end. All right. Please join me in our call to worship. O come, let us worship and lift up our hearts, because the earth is the Lord's and everything in it. O come, let us worship and bow down, because even those who walk in darkness can see a great light. O come, let us worship and bow down, because God gives us what we need. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us confess our sins to, to the one who welcomes us with open hearts. Sovereign God, we confess we have given idols command over us, the idols of power and wealth, fame and security. We confess we have fallen into the ways of this world and have forgotten our family in Christ. We have lost sight of the reign of God here on earth. Forgive us, call us into your reign to declare you the one who has power over us because your power is love. Call us to love our neighbors as ourselves, and to work for justice, show mercy, and love one another in the name of Christ Jesus, our Lord. Amen. 
Jesus came to us not to reign as a king over us, but to serve us and show us the way of God in the way of love. Jesus called us to become humble and serve one another, and that the most important commandment was to love God and to love our neighbors as ourselves. This is the way of our sovereign king. Know that you are forgiven. Show love and serve one another, especially our neighbors in need, as Christ serves us. Amen. The abundant grace of Christ Jesus, the rich mercy of God, and the unity of the Holy Spirit be with you all.
The Lord be with you. Let us pray. O God, our true life, to serve you is freedom, and to know you is unending joy. We worship you, we glorify you, we give thanks to you for your great glory. Abide with us, reign with us, and make this world into a fit habitation for your divine majesty. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. The first lesson is from Jeremiah, chapter 23, verses 1 through 6. Woe to the shepherds who destroy and scatter the sheep of my pasture, says the Lord. Therefore, thus says the Lord, the God of Israel, concerning the shepherds who shepherd my people, it is you who have scattered my flock and have driven them away, and you have not attended to them. So I will attend to you for your evil doings, says the Lord. Then I myself will gather the remnant of my flock out of all the lands where I have driven them, and I will bring them back to their fold, and they shall be fruitful and multiply. I will raise up shepherds over them who will shepherd them, and they shall not fear any longer or be dismayed, nor shall any be missing, says the Lord. The days are surely coming, says the Lord, when I will raise up for David a righteous branch and he shall reign as king and deal wisely, and shall execute justice and righteousness in the land. In his days, Judah will be called, and Israel will live in safety. And this is the name by which he will be called. The Lord is our righteousness. The word of the Lord. Be we will read Psalm 46 responsively. God is our refuge and strength a very present help in trouble. Therefore we will not fear, though the earth be moved, and though the mountains shake to the depths of the sea. Though its waters rage and foam, and though the mountains tremble with its tumult. There is a river whose streams make glad the city of God, the holy habitation of the Most High. God is in the midst of the city, it shall not be shaken. God shall help it at the break of day. The nations rage and the kingdoms shake. God speaks and the earth melts away. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our stronghold. Come and now regard the works of the Lord. What desolations God has brought upon the earth. Behold, the one who makes war to cease in all the world, who breaks the bow and shatters the spear, and burns the shields with fire. Be still then, and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our stronghold. The second reading comes from Colossians, the first chapter, verses 11 through 20. May you be made strong with all the strength that comes from his glorious power. And may you be prepared to endure everything with patience, while joyfully giving thanks to the Father, who has enabled you to share in the inheritance of the saints in the light. He has rescued us from the power of darkness and transferred us into the kingdom of his beloved Son, in whom we have redemption, the forgiveness of sins. He is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of all creation, for in him all things in heaven and on earth were created, things visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions or rulers or powers, all things have been created through him and for him. He himself is before all things, and in him all things hold together. He is the head of the body, the church. He is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, so that he might have he might come to have first place in everything. For in him all the fullness of God was pleased to dwell, and through him God was pleased to reconcile to himself all things, 
whether on earth or in heaven, by making peace through the blood of his cross. The word of the Lord. All the children are invited forward for our children's message. All right, if y'all want to sit here, that way you can see the front of the altar here. So you're going to have to turn around. <laughs> Coming behind you today. Everybody can see behind them? Okay, good, good. All right, well, good morning. Thank you for coming up for children's time. So I mentioned today is Christ the King Sunday, and that is the last Sunday of the church year. So this is kind of like we're celebrating New Year's Eve, but for the church. That means that starting next Sunday, we're going to be in the season of Advent when we're waiting for Jesus to be born and we're getting ready and excited for Christmas. So today we kind of get to celebrate all that's happened this past year. So we have all these different colors of stoles that are up here to represent all these different seasons of the church year. So first I mentioned we've got Advent with this color, the blue, right? So we'll have blue pyramids up here. You love blue? That's amazing. I like blue too. Awesome. Awesome. So yeah, you're, you're going to really like Advent then. There's going to be lots of blue. All right, and then after Advent, we celebrate Christmas. Oh, you like green too? Okay, good. We're going to get there. We're going to celebrate Christmas, and that's going to be white. And then we're going to celebrate Epiphany when the wise men come. They follow the star to find Jesus, and that's green. And then we celebrate Lent as we're getting ready for Easter, and that's purple. I think purple is my favorite color, I would say. So, and then we get to celebrate Easter, which is the birth of Jesus, and that's white again. And then we celebrate Pentecost, so, <laughs> and this is the red. So we celebrate the Holy Spirit coming down to the church and the church being born. We get to celebrate red. And then we go into a time where everything's green and we're celebrating the life and the growth that we have in Jesus. And so we have all these different colors. So throughout the year, we do this Every year is a cycle in the church to remind us of the story of Jesus and how that our lives center around that story. And this helps us remember. So I have here for you all, this is a church calendar of the church year. And what we're going to do is I'll hand them out at the end and then you can color them in based off of the colors that we just talked about. And then it's helpful because it lets you know when all of those special holidays are that we celebrate as a church. So will you pray with me? So we end our prayers with we love you and we praise you and amen, right? All right, let's pray. Dear God, we thank you for your son, Jesus. We thank you for his birth and his life. We thank you that he died on a cross to save us. And we thank you that he rose again to forgive us of our sins and to give us everlasting life. We thank you for the Holy Spirit coming to us to give us life and renewal. Lord, please be with us as we journey through this year to remind us that we are always centered around your life. We love you and we praise you. Amen. Awesome. All right, before you leave, don't forget your coloring pages. <laughs> Or you can get them later. That's fine. <laughs> There'll be more in the back. Thank you. Thanks for coming up. Thank you. The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke in the 23rd chapter. When they came to the place that is called the skull, they crucified Jesus there with the criminals, one on his right 
and one on his left. Then Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. And they cast lots to divide his clothing. And the people stood by watching. But the leaders scoffed at him, saying, He saved others. Let him save himself, if he is the Messiah of God, his chosen one. The soldiers also mocked him, coming up and offering him sour wine and saying, If you are the king of the Jews, save yourself. There was also an inscription over him, This is the king of the Jews. One of the criminals who were hanged there kept deriding him and saying, Are you not the Messiah? Save yourself and us. But the other rebuked him, saying, Do you not fear God, since you are under the same sentence of condemnation? And we are indeed have been condemned justly, for we are getting what we deserve for our deeds. But this man has done nothing wrong. Then he said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. He replied, truly I tell you, today you will be with me in paradise. The Gospel of the Lord. Please be seated. This is one of the rare times in the church year where we get to consider the big picture of Jesus's life, his time on earth from birth to death to new life. It's a time when the birth of Jesus can be set right next to the crucifixion of Jesus. And we get to consider their connections the importance that they hold together. Each event of Jesus' life needs the other for the true life of Christ, the King, to reign in our lives and in the world. But before we get to those connections, we are presented with this gospel reading. And there's a stark difference between what the reign of man looks like and what the reign of God looks like on the cross. With Jesus' crucifixion, we are shown what human kingship is like, mainly through the reign of Caesar. Caesar can represent every tyrant the world has ever known, the ones that still reign today and the ones that will inevitably come in the future. In Jesus' time, crucifixion was not the only way that Rome executed their enemies, but it was the most humiliating and the most condemning form of death. It was considered a God-forsaken place. Crucifying someone was the way that C Caesar showed his power in the world. On the cross, Jesus was mocked by his enemies, and a sarcastic sign hung over Jesus that read, This is the King of the Jews. And it's like Rome was proclaiming, Look what happens to kings of this kind your so-called king. So in one way, Jesus' crucifixion looks like this kingship of man has won through domination and cruelty and death. But for those with eyes to see and ears to hear, this scene shows us another kind of kingship altogether. It shows us the reign of Christ the King. 
It's an odd throne. But God is present and active in and through events that seem the most hopeless and God-forsaken. This is the salvation that the good news proclaims. In the very place that seems the most God-forsaken, the place of dying on a cross, that is where God is defeating death and sin. Where God's reign is mocked and Caesar's reign seems to have won, God is reigning. That sign above Jesus' head on the cross, the one that's meant to make fun of Jesus, to demean him, that's exactly where the truth of Christ is proclaimed, that Jesus is king above all kings. And this is a very different king than we're used to in the world. It's a complete opposite of the kingship of man. It's a reversal of Caesar's reign. Instead of domination, Jesus reigns with servanthood. And instead of mockery, Jesus reigns with kindness. And instead of cruelty, Jesus reigns with mercy. While Jesus' enemies mean to mock him, they are unwittingly declaring him the true Messiah and King. And in the midst of it all, Jesus asks God to forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. When one of the thieves hanging on a cross next to him asks Jesus to remember him when Jesus comes into his kingdom, Jesus responds, Today you will be with me in paradise. Today. While Caesar's kingdom gates are closed, Christ's gates of salvation swing wide open. So here we are, ready to begin the season of Advent, preparing for the season of Christmas, waiting and watching for the birth of the Christ child. And we see that we wait for a God who will come into the world in the most humble and vulnerable of ways as a tiny baby given birth to a poor family. And it's this baby that is the king of kings. In both his birth and his death, Jesus shows himself as a king who gives up greatness in favor of humble service. In both his birth and his death, Jesus refuses to show his power to defeat his enemies. Instead, Jesus brings forgiveness and salvation even to those who would mock or kill him. Far from the tyrants that we're used to in our world, Jesus creates a kingdom that is a community of love and mercy and is open to all. And the church is born and sustains life through the life and death of Jesus. Whether we're kneeling next to the manger or we're standing below the cross, we gather around Jesus and receive his good news and his forgiveness. Even though we are ever surrounded by the kingship of man in our world, the Caesars that reign in our life, we are called to proclaim Christ's reign of love. We are called to live in Jesus' kingdom, which isn't defined by borders or walls. We are called to live in God's kingdom, which is shown through us. We live not as a kingdom of domination, but a kingdom of servanthood. We live, live as a kingdom not of mockery, but of kindness. And we live as a kingdom not of cruelty, but of mercy. We wait and pray and hope and prepare for this kingdom of Christ to eventually reign forever in our hearts 
and in all of the world. After a few moments of silence, we will be singing a Teze hymn that is repetitive and simple. And the lines come from this reading that we have, Jesus, Remember Me. We're going to repeat it five times. And so I invite you to take that time to ponder and pray about Jesus' life and to pray for this coming reign of God to forever be in our hearts and the world. Amen. We now confess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. United with your saints across time and place, we pray for our shared world. We pray for your church, emboldened denominations and faith-based organizations in creative and collaborative ministries, and increase our work for the sake of the gospel. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for the earth, protect waterways from pollution, and animal habitats from destruction. Guide us in careful stewardship of waters, plant life, and animals. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for the nations of the world. Instill in every leader's heart a desire for justice and peace. Support the work of international collaborations that seek the goals of health and joy for all people. 
bring peace to Ukraine and all war-torn countries. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for all who are undermined or oppressed. Amplify the voices of the unheard and break open stubborn systems of injustice. Bring about your righteousness and fill us all with your redeeming light. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for those who are suffering in body, mind, or spirit. Bring them comfort, peace, and healing. Please be with Dale, Donna, Beth, Denny, Ruby, Jim, Chuck, Justin, Michelle, Barry, Sophia, and all those we now name aloud or in the silence of our hearts. Provide them with the care they need. Lord, in your mercy. We give thanks for all who have died in the faith. Console us who mourn and comfort us with the beautiful promise of life in your kingdom. Lord, in your mercy. Accept these prayers, gracious God, and those known only to you, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. Please share a sign of peace with one another. He's doing it. Let us pray. God of life, you give us these gifts of the earth 
these resources of our life and our labor. Take them offered in great thanksgiving and use them to set a table that will heal the whole creation. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. indeed right and salutary that we should at all times and in all places offer thanks and praise to you O Lord Holy Father through Christ our Lord born as King in David's line his power was revealed in weakness his majesty in mercy once enthroned upon the cross you raised him from death to your right hand there to rule forever in your kingdom of justice love and peace and so with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples and said, take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in remembrance of me. Let us pray together the prayer our Lord taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The risen Christ dwells with us here. All who are hungry, all who are thirsty, come. Amen. Please be seated.
Now may the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Amen. May Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit bless you now and forever. Amen. Go in peace, serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.